we are being told that our guest is in Arise Abuja studio, and he is Ambassador Joe Keshi, who has now joined us to look at this stunning turn of events in the Niger Republic and Gabon, where soldiers topple the constitutional order in the past month, as well as all the noise around them. Good to have you on the show this morning on The Morning Show, Ambassador Keshi. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, uh, Kayode, and good morning, Shi. So, good. So, the African Union is taking swift action by suspending Gabon from all AU activities in response to the recent coup. The AU has also demanded the immediate return of power to civilian authorities in Gabon, and they've threatened to impose targeted sanctions if this demand is not met. How effective do you believe these measures are in deterring coups uh, and promoting democracy on the continent of Africa? Do you think there's any use for this? Well, in the case of, in the case of Gabon, uh, I, I think the EU um, has made a mistake. Uh, when you realize that uh, the crisis started, as we were told, from uh, the announcement of an election that was not concluded, and uh, the announcement declared the sitting president as the winner, and that you know, precipitated the action of the military, I would have thought that what the AU could have done, rather than spend their time condemning and threatening to impose sanction, was to have immediately engaged the military to complete the electoral process and declare the winner of that election, you know, as uh, the president. In that way, they would not have granted, because right now, what they've done in spending time condemning and threatening to impose sanctions the young officers or the, the coup plotters in, in uh, Gabon, you know, have announced that they are going to saw in their own president, I think, to, on Monday. And so a lot of time that they could have spent engaging them, persuading them to take, you know, uh, action to complete the political process, in my view, has been, uh, has been lost. I sincerely wish they've done that, perhaps you know, we would have been able to persuade them to be rational and to be reasonable in dealing with the situation. But look, sanctions do work, but again, we must say this, we must admit, uh, you know, the reality is that um, when you look at what has happened in Guinea, uh, Burkina Faso, Mali, and now uh, Niger, where sanctions have uh, been imposed, they are biting, but it has not convinced the new leadership, the military leaders, you know, to change their, their, their minds. So we must find a better way of negotiating and getting the military out rather than staying from a far distance and announcing, uh, you know, condemning it and imposing sanctions. You know, but all said and done, look, we are in a new uh, territory. Well, not really a new territory, but a familiar territory that we thought, you know, has disappeared. AU and other regional organizations should sit down and begin to think seriously out of the box how to prevent situations like this from arising. I mean, speaking about getting the military out, Ambassador Keshi, we are seeing changes and appointments in the Central Administrative Unit of the Cameroonian Defense Mini uh, Ministry, uh, having followed the change of constitutional order in Gabon. Now, uh, uh, sorry, uh, in Cameroon. And then in Rwanda, President Paul Kagame has also approved the retirement of several generals and officers in the Rwandan military. Now, how do you interpret this uh, development in Cameroon and Rwanda in light of the coup that has happened in Gabon and in Niger? What implications might they have for uh, the regional stability, you know, as we speak about it even now? I tell you a little story from my career. Um, Less than 10 days after the Buhari coup in the 70s or 80s, we went to Sudan and President Numeri, you know, asked us to, to study 
to study how we can emerge, how Nigeria can merge the military and uh, the civilians, you know, to form what, of, what as Zeke once called a diarchy. And uh, he, he said that we should talk to the general who was uh, in charge of that, um, uh, that program. And so, led by uh, General Idi Agbo, we actually went to listen to the general. Guess what happened at the end of the day? The general who was mandated <coughs> to see how he could fuse the civilians and the military together so that Numeri can continue to stay in power was the same general that overthrew Numeri at the end of the day. What am I trying to say? If these African leaders think that changing the guards, you know, is um, uh, the best way out of the situation, they are making a mistake. And I make a prediction. If there is a coup in any of these countries, don't be surprised that it is the same new people that have been brought on board that certainly will remove them from office. Look, they should have been... This, the African leaders that we are discussing, they've spent so many years in office. I don't think there's anything new they can offer. So what they should have done, looking at the situation and the, and the uprisings in a number of countries, is to make a pledge to their people that this is probably going to be their last tenure. They will not contest the next election and put in place a process to democratize the system, to have a new successor. In that case, the military might not be tempted to remove them at the end of the day, and they will suddenly have peace and democracy will begin to flourish. That will also send a message to other, you know, long-serving presidents to begin to do something similar, you know, like that. But if they think that changing the guards for their own self-protection is the way to go, I I'm sorry, I think they are making a great mistake. And I predict that these same fellows the new guys are on the blocks could probably be their doom at the end of the day. Okay, I have almost overflogged the statement of uh, President of Liberia, George Weah. I keep repeating it over and over and over again because I know that it makes a lot of sense to a lot of Africans, which is the fact that um, there's a need for Africa to look at those who have become sit tight. Uh, presidents serving more than two terms, going into third and making an extension to seven years in office and then still removing uh, the what is in the constitution that stops them from being able to contest. What do you think AU should do about them as against waiting for coups to happen? Well, look... <laughs> I think AU, to be fair to the African Union, they've tried to, they've raised this issue many times. They've raised this issue many times, even in, uh, at, the, at the regional level in ECOWAS. An attempt was made, you know, to ensure that presidents do not extend their limits. But a number of presidents in the region, you know, um, uh, opposed it because they wanted to continue to stay in office. So, but I think that AU should not be discouraged. I sincerely believe that they should continue to press it upon, you know, um, the leaders of the continent, that they are engendering the continent. They are, they are again creating a new, you know, um, crisis in the region. And that the best way out is for everybody to respect the constitutional term limits. And if there's a term limit of five, six, seven years, Look, if it's for two terms, after 14 years, you know, one should be tired of being, uh, you know, carrying the whole problems of the nation and allow others to try. Government is a continuum. You could, look, you could decide to leave office and install your successor, as we do here in this country anyway, particularly at the, government, at the governor's level. You know, but the most important thing is if you obey the constitution and allow the term limits to, you know, work well, I can assure you then the next issue will of course be dealing with issues of development, trying to solve the problems of poverty, ensuring the welfare of the people. These are some of the issues that are given rise to, you know, to coups. Look, it's not as if the military would do wonders. Certainly not. We've had experience of the military a couple of years ago. You know, and there is no hope that the new set of military leaders would do better. 
but they are taking advantage of the fact that the citizens are tired of a sit-tight president. They are tired of lack of development. They are tired of the fact that in some countries, it, the countries are rich, but the people live in abject poverty. Okay. And I think so. The president of Liberia is, is right, but AU must begin to think seriously on how to deal with this issue again. But they've been dealing with it. Is but there... African leaders, a number of them are just not listening. Okay, is there a solution that you can put on the table? Because it's not enough for them to say, oh, we're dealing with it, we're talking to them, and they can't do anything other than just encourage them to not spend 42 years, just reduce it to about 28, that will suffice. But the truth of the matter is when coups come, then they start talking tough to the military men who themselves are very tough people. They're trained to kill. That's what they're trained to do. So these people are not soft people like any politician in, on the continent of Africa. What should be a solution beyond no. just the rhetorics of we're talking to them? Good question, Coyote. Look, you know, there's no solution to this thing other than number one for, look, throughout the whole continent, let's allow democracy to flourish. Let the presidents obey the constitutional term limits. But above all, and this is the most important, let them focus on the issues of development. If they focus on the issues of development, you know, that will certainly reduce uh, any reasons for the military to stage a coup. But look, there's very little African um, AU can do. They can, when they meet, the leaders can talk to themselves. They can get angry with one another. But the leaders who've made up their minds to stay. I gave you the example of the fact that this, the issue of uh, elongation was discussed at the ECOWAS level. A number of presidents voted against it. They were against it. They were actually against putting it on paper. So what do you do in a situation like that? And of course, look, this is a club of, <laughs> of gentlemen, you know. And, uh, well, sorry, there's also at least one or two ladies now as uh, president, at least in Tanzania, there's one. You know, so they should continue to talk about this. They should actually use the opportunity of what's going on in a number of countries today to talk to some of these leaders and begin to encourage them to begin to put in place a transitional program that will gradually ease each and every one of them out of office. But as it is, look... What the recent uh, events have showed uh, teach us is that these presidents are not ready to go. If what comes to your mind in the first instance is to change the military guards, it tells you that they are not prepared to go. So no matter what AU says, until they are tired or they die in office, there is practically nothing anybody can do except the whole world unites and begin to put pressure on them to go. I'm not even sure that they will listen, you know, for whatever reason. I still can't fathom any reasonable reason why somebody would like to stay in office for 40 years. The people are in poverty. The people are clamoring for democracy, but the leaders are just deaf and have refused to listen to them. Definitely agree with you. In the last three years, there have been eight coups in the region. And there are no doubts that the rise in insecurity and uh, even in declining economic prospects have contributed to fragility in these countries. Now, in Niger, for example, despite the increase in foreign forces, especially from the U.S. and France and the military bases, the leadership has been able to stop insurgent attacks from al-Qaeda and even the Islamic State affiliates and uh, Boko Haram. Meanwhile, uh, President Ali Bongo has been in power for 14 years, having succeeded his father, Umar Bongo, who held sway as president of the country for 42 years, holding father and son together for a cumulative period of 56 years. Now, in looking at the root cause of some of these things, first off, I want to ask you, what do you believe are the potential consequences of, uh, of these long uh, tenures in the Office of Governance as it relates to political stability and the democratic processes in African countries? And should the African Union not be looking at the root causes of these coups to be able to stop them from happening in the future? Well, you know, again, to be fair to the African Union, 
uh, Africa, you know, remember when uh, a couple of years ago, um, uh, four or five presidents came together to focus on economic development through NEPAD. They, they, they've actually been trying to tell their colleagues that they need to focus on the issues of development, which is, at the end of the day, at the root of, you know, uh, the, the, the whole crisis. But look, leaders who have made up their minds, and, and you can also understand when you look, maybe except, except uh, you know, a place like uh, Rwanda or one or two other places, in Cameroon, Ahijo left office because he was more or less forced to leave office. And so the successor also believes that death will be the only thing, or serious illness, when he becomes incapacitated, that is when he will leave office. Bongo saw his father stay for 40 years. And that's all everybody got to know that that's how they, you know. But the point I want to make is that you're right. African Union, to its credit, has been trying its best. But look, it is challenging. All they can do is raise the issue in a, in a conference. And if some leaders oppose it, invariably others, you know, uh, also succumb and allow them to face their fate. But except they now insist and look for a way of getting uh, the, um, you know, the global world, maybe the UN involved in trying to persuade C-type presidents, you know, uh, not to go, I mean, to go away from the scene. I really don't see what AU can do much. But look, AU has been talking about the develop, uh, has been talking about issues of development, how to fight poverty, how to address the challenges facing the continent. They've been doing this, you know, and it's, it remains part of their, you know, cardinal uh, objective, particularly now that they've transited from uh, OAU to AU. But the issue is the, the nature and the character of leadership we have in the, in, the, in the region, in the African continent. And except the change, and except there is a serious change of leadership in terms of the recruitment process, you know, the kind of leaders that come on board, we are, sick, we are, we are going to continue to have this problem, you know, when you look at a few countries that are doing reasonably well, and you look at their history or their trajectory, you will see that from day one, they, they, they decided and they decided and entrenched democracy, and they also focus on the issues of development. Everybody talks of uh, Botswana. Everybody talks of Namibia these days, you know, because they've, they've lived, followed the constitutional process. They've also ensured that there is development in that country. And I think this is what, you know, the rest of the region, uh, countries in the region need to do. Outside that, there's honestly nothing else that can, you know, stop these situations, except, I repeat, there's development, there's the welfare of the people is taken into consideration, and above all, leaders respect the rule of law, follow the constitution, and guess what? We're going to have peace. Okay. you know, and security and prosperity in the region. Okay, thank you very much, Ambassador, Ambassador Kashi. Uh, thank you so much for always honoring our invitation. But just before we go, we have to go now, but let me just ask you, just yes or no, yes or no, do you think it is possible for AU to decide to sanction leaders in Africa who decide to sit tight? Yes or no, is it possible? Can they be sanctioned? Just a yes they or no, sir. It can but it will have no effect. It will have no effect. Okay, thank they you very much. It can be sanctioned, much. but it will have no effect, yes. Because thank they you. will go back to their countries and sit down there, you know, yeah. Okay, thank, thank you, you very too. much. Okay.